Today we're going to set up a smart temperature monitoring system with our Arduino and the DS18B20 temperature sensor. This will be a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'll show you how this is unique and why you would use this over other temperature sensors and we'll connect it to Arduino. In this video I'll be using the Arduino Minima, a breadboard, some mail to mail jumper wires, a 20x4 I2C LCD display, a piezo alarm, a 1K and 4.7K ohm resistor, a DS18B20 temperature sensor probe, and the S8050 NPN transistor. This is the DS18B20 temperature sensor. Now I purchased this sensor so that I could remotely monitor the pool water temperature using Arduino Cloud. It comes in various package types including TO92 and this waterproof probe version you see here and they both offer good flexibility for different application requirements. Now the waterproof version, this one right here, is particularly useful in environments where dust and moisture are going to be an issue. It's a digital output sensor. It offers high precision temperature readings in digital form with a resolution adjustable from 9-bit to 12-bit. And when you use the DS18B20 sensor without explicitly setting its resolution, it operates at a default resolution of 12 bits. However, you do have the flexibility to change the resolution to 9, 10, or even 11 bits based on your specific requirements. Now you may be asking yourself, why would I ever want to set the sensor below 12-bit resolution? Isn't more better? Well, you do it for faster sampling rate. Sensors operating at lower resolutions typically have faster sampling rates. Maybe you're doing it to reduce power consumption. Lower resolution sensors generally consume less power during temperature conversions because they require fewer measurements and calculations. It may be in many applications, especially those where precise temperature measurements with decimal precision are not critical, the 9-bit resolution can provide adequate accuracy. One of the standout features of the DS18B20 is its ability to connect multiple sensors to a single digital pin using the one wire bus protocol. This feature simplifies wiring and reduces the number of pins required on the microcontroller, making it ideal for projects requiring distributed temperature sensing. I should also add that each DS18B20 sensor has a unique 64-bit serial code assigned to it during manufacturing, and this allows you to identify and read temperature data from each sensor separately, even though they share the same communication bus. And this is very useful because you can get precise temperature monitoring in various locations. This sensor also has a very wide temperature range. It measures temperatures from minus 55 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 degrees centigrade. This temperature range is equivalent to minus 67 degrees Fahrenheit to 257 degrees Fahrenheit. It also has the parasitic power option, which means that it can be powered directly from the data line, which eliminates the need for an external power supply. And lastly, I'd like to mention the alarm function. The DS18B20 has a built-in programmable alarm function that can trigger a signal when the temperature goes outside of a specified range. And this alarm function can be used without the need for continuous monitoring by your microcontroller. And I do like this feature because your Arduino doesn't need to be constantly checking the temperature readings to detect these changes. Instead, the sensor can independently monitor the temperature and alert the Arduino only when it's necessary, and that saves resources and processing power. Overall, this temperature sensor stands out for its combination of accuracy, versatility, ease of use, and its robustness, and it makes it a preferred choice for temperature sensing in a really a wide range of applications, including environmental monitoring, industrial automation, HVAC systems, consumer electronics, and many more. Here's my setup for just one temperature sensor. As you can see, I'm using five pins from the Arduino Minima, and I'm using the SCL and the SDA pins for this I2C LCD display here. I've got the breadboard power rails connected to 5 volt and ground on the Arduino. The positive and negative wires from the sensor are attached to the positive and ground rails on the breadboard. I have a 4.7K ohm resistor attached to 5 volt rail on one side. On the other side of the resistor, it's attached to pin 2 of the Arduino and the data line from the sensor. This code integrates a DS18B20 temperature sensor with an Arduino and displays the temperature readings in Celsius and Fahrenheit on an I2C LCD screen. This setup involves initializing the Dallas temperature library for the sensor communication and the liquid crystal I2C library for the LCD display showing the temperature on a 20 by 4 character display. On line 13 you'll notice that we use the one wire protocol and that the temperature is updated every 5 seconds. This is the code that I will post on Facebook. It has Fahrenheit and Celsius included but you can delete whichever one you like. 
Now I'd like to add three temperature sensors to one Arduino pin. Now the primary reason for this sketch is to use the Arduino to retrieve each address of devices on the one wire bus using the one wire dot search address function. Now this function searches the one wire devices that are connected to the bus and fills the address array with the 64 bit address of any device that is found. If a device is found, the address array will contain its unique address, which is then used to check to see if that device is a DS18B20 sensor and to communicate with it for temperature readings. Now, this process allows the Arduino to identify and interact with each sensor individually on the one wire bus. Now we have three sensors. We want to connect each of the power pins to the 5 volt rail on the breadboard. The ground pins go to the ground rail on the breadboard and the data pins of each sensor are connected to digital pin 2 of your Arduino. Remember that the 4.7k ohm pull up resistor is needed between the power and the data pins for each of the sensors to ensure proper communication on the one wire bus. Now this Arduino sketch is designed to read the temperatures of the DS18B20 sensors and display the readings in Fahrenheit on our LCD screen. Now each of our sensor's unique addresses are hard coded and that allows individual temperature readings. This sketch does highlight the ability to handle multiple sensors on the same one wire bus and the use of non-blocking temperature conversions to improve performance. And you can see the temperatures are displayed on different lines of the LCD and this provides a clear real time view of the data from each sensor. The readings are of room temperature water, hot coffee and ice water. In this setup, we add the piezo buzzer so that we can run the alarm feature and we set up the temperature sensor the same way we have before. We still use the 4.7K ohm pull-up resistor between the data and the power pins. The I2C LCD display is still connected the same way to 5 volt ground and then the other two pins are connected to SDA and SCL pins. Now we add the piezo buzzer and we connect one terminal of the piezo buzzer to the digital pin 8 and the other one goes to Arduino's ground pin. If you look closer, you can see that we used an S8050 NPN transistor to connect the buzzer to the Arduino. We connect the base of the transistor to the Arduino's digital pin 8 through a 1K ohm resistor. Now this resistor limits the base current and that protects the Arduino's output pin. Next we connect the emitter of the transistor to Arduino's ground and then we connect the negative terminal of the piezo buzzer to the collector of the transistor. This Arduino sketch integrates the DS18B20 temperature sensor with an I2C LCD display and it adds a temperature alarm feature using a piezo buzzer and you can see in the sketch that it has a high and low temperature threshold and when the temperature crosses these limits it triggers an alarm on the LCD and activates the buzzer. For this demo you're going to hear an alarm go off below 70 degrees and then above 80 degrees. I'm placing the probe in a glass of ice and you'll see how responsive it is as soon as the temperature reaches that threshold, the alarm comes on. Now I'm just gonna warm it back up with my hand over 70, and then I'm gonna use my dragon breath to uh, heat it up over 80, and you'll hear the alarm again. And finally, I just wanted to see what the precision of these sensors were, just to see how close the readings are to each other. You can see that sensor three is a little off. Now you can also tell if they're calibrated. My, my hope is that if I left them in here a while, they would all kinda equal out to the same temperature, but uh, I didn't leave them in there very long, so. Sensor 1 and 2 is pretty close to each other, but sensor 3 is about 1.3 degrees higher. Not bad. Thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, be sure to like it by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy this type of thing. Check out our Facebook page, and I'll see you again with another video.